I'm going to try to do something uh, not that conventional in the sense that I, I try to put into my talk actually uh, some science, but also some <coughs> uh, assumptions that uh, a student of first first year or refreshment can to do that in order to emphasize the risk, the risk assessment in using a flyer. Uh, although it's not that sometimes it's not that scientific, but it makes the point, and this is the all about in the in this uh, session. There are two, uh, and I'm uh, referring actually to uh, a risk assessment from two aspects. One aspect is from a, a bio or a biotoxicity in one aspect, which is everybody knows that the fly ash is uh, rich in the bone usually. And bone is one of the toxic elements that may affect plants' growth. The second uh, part is the uh, health. So if one is growing crop a uh, basis on sludge plus a uh, uh, fly ash or fly ash by itself, uh, there is some kind of a uh, chance that uh, some of the elements will accumulate in the a vegetarian part, fruit, etc., and may reach the uh, food chain. Uh, so, from these two aspects, I want to to uh, elaborate a little bit. So, first, I want to uh, concentrate on bone, just to. Uh, just to cover the agronomist part of my uh, talk. And I want to uh, actually to assume that all the amount of bone in this case that available in flyers is actually already available to the plants. Uh, all the concentration is accumulating in the upper 20 centimeter layer, uh, and there is no interaction whatsoever, or in this case, not interaction whatsoever. And I also include some interaction in the in the soil itself, which is reduced <coughs> the the level of a, of a bone availability to to the plants. <clears throat> so in order to uh, to use a, a in order to use a, a model to uh, to uh, calculate the availability of bone in soil solution uh, there is a model that we was developed a long time ago a mathematical model conceptual model and a, a, which actually includes the amount of bone that adsorb, adsorb on the uh, soil constituents, which is mainly the clay itself. In Israel, the main clay is a Montmonitic clay. Uh, in different countries, it's different, uh, uh, different clays behave differently. So, uh, and this is something that I want to transferred through the entire lecture that there is nothing a, a, a <coughs> constant in fly ash as well as the treatment that we are doing in our field. So it depends on the conditions, on the soil type, a, the type of a fly ash, <coughs> as well as some other factors that will go through it later on. Anyway, the amount that absorb 
is a function of T, which is the number of sites available for adsorption on the clay surface, mainly on the clay surface, uh, a little bit on uh, some kind of uh, some other constituents like a, uh, a iron oxide and aluminum oxide, etc. <coughs> QT, which is the, the total number or total concentration of available boron in the soil before actually interacting with the soil itself. This is the hump of amount of available boron in the, in the soil. Uh, K sub H is the constant, the affinity constant for the hydroxyl that compete on the same site that boron compete on the on the clay surface. Hydroxyl, which is the, represent the pH actually. Uh, and some in the KHB is the, the actually the uh, affinity of a bone acid, which has an equilibrium based on the pH with the borate anion, which is the KB. KH is the hydrolysis constant. <coughs> there is a trick, mathematical trick, because you can see that in both sides of the equation there are QB. And uh, there is uh, some kind of a uh, newton raphson equation, mathematically, that can be applied in order to, uh, uh, to actually to calculate Kb, <coughs> because it's in both sides of the equation. But this is a uh, newton raphson equation. <coughs> R, which is very important factor, R is the ratio uh, actually, is the water content in the soil. And if you talk about concentration, the concentration change with the moisture content. The lower is the moisture content, the higher is the concentration. If the higher is the concentration, then QB is increasing. So this is some kind of a self-regulation in the soil in order to maintain bone level moderately, without any peaks. So I don't want to go into it too, too much, but this model allow to, uh, to estimate the availability of bone or to the toxicity of bone in the soil. And it's worked so well that uh, I'm very confident with it for many years. <coughs> now I want to jump from theory to, as I say, the, actually to summarize a very simple calculations. <coughs> and what I have in this table, I actually say, uh, uh, analyze three types of, uh, of coals used in Israel. One is uh, from Russia. One is from South Africa, and the other one is from Colombia. We do use others, but uh, those are the main and the main that they call that we use in Israel. And by knowing the total, and this is very crucial, by knowing the total a bone availability in the cola that so can be leached totally. Uh, this is the amount, the amount that I took in order for these calculations. So this is the maximum that one can extract out of the of the of the fly ash after the combustion uh, to extract out of the uh, of the fly ash in order to utilize in soil. Uh, regardless of uh, with organic matter or without organic matter, because what I considered here is only the fly ash, uh, only the bone that come from the fly ash, not from the sludge. Uh, by the way, in the parentheses, 
organic matter has also capability to absorb bone. So, so if this is the, this is the case, organic, in addition, the organic material, for the addition of organic matter, it, the level of bone will be small, lower than it was calculated. So this is the Schleckes, who knows what the Schleckes mean. Uh, so, and I made this calculation to two types of soils. As I said, if you are considering soil treatment without talking about the soil type, sometimes it's, it's meaningless. You have to know what, talk, what soil you are talking about. Because in some Greek, I'm sure that there are kaolinitic soil, many kaolinitic soil, which behave completely different than monolithic soil. So there is nothing, there is no sense to talk about soil without referring to the type of clay. I'm apologizing for the, I, I'm, I have some uh, cold, so I'm sorry, the voice changed a little bit. Anyway, what I did, I did, I did for two types of a, a benchmark Israeli <coughs> soil. One is clay soil, and why the less soil is in the, in the Negev. Uh, tomorrow, Pinchas will show you the clay soil. No, I'll show you a cup of water. What? I'll show you a cup of water. Ah, oh, thank you, Mirko. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So clay soil and uh, less soil, with for three loads of fly ash. Uh, the fly ash is torn per acre, and this uh, and the the two two tons per dunam or eight tons per acre was uh, chosen because of a uh, of uh, the ratio between organic matter in sludge in the sludge in the bamsa what we called in the uh, enviro because of this ratio. So if one is comparing the clay soil for one year of application of fly ash and organic matter, I mean with the enviro, in one, one year of application, one can see that the concentration of bone in the soil in the in the uh, in soil in soil moisture is so low that actually is in the level that the plants need the bone for normal growth. Bone is toxic, but in some levels you need it, like a sodium chloride. If one will eat, drink a solution of one liter of sodium chloride in five normal, will die immediately. But he need it for a normal functional uh, level. So by elevating, remember, all the bone is coming from the flesh. Everything extract was extracted out to the, into the solution. Everything stuck in the upper 20 centimeters of soil. And the water content is the field capacity field capacity. This is the level where the range, the plants are very convenient to extract water <coughs> into their plants. By elevating the content from 8 to 40, so this is five times greater, actually five year constituents here, five years, the level is 44 ppm, a uh, point 44 ppm, half ppm, uh, South Africa safe completely, a little bit more the, the Columbia. All those levels, remember, are below the toxicity level of citrus, which is the most sensitive plant. So we are still safe. Remember that in nature, this situation does not exist whatsoever. Do you have a rain? <coughs> Five years, consec consecutive years, leaching. So this means that 
If this is the case, then uh, it, you can even use more than five, but I want to be conservative. Five, five consecutive years without any damage for those planes. Once you reach 10 times to 80, then, then uh, the toxicity for, for, for C2 is obvious. But for cotton, it, it, we are way below the cotton or any fiber or, or uh, field crops. So this means that now depends on the, not only on the soil that you apply to that, but also to the crops that you are planning to. So once you, once you know all those uh, factors in it, then you can plan how to use uh, efficiency those, uh, uh, those <coughs> materials. By switching from clay soil to less soil, which is the, uh, uh, is the less clay, which is the field capacity is lower than the field capacity of clay soil, then the numbers go up. <coughs> but still, eight, after uh, eight tons per hectare, per acre, I'm sorry, is still very low for the less soil. For 40, it's uh, up to not that significant. And remember that there are a lot of uh, uh, precautions what took place here, so we can just uh, uh, extract the time even more. And uh, 80 tons, so it means 10 years, consecutive years, 10 years, at the same place without leaching, adding into it the bone level, it still can be manageable. So first of all, I want to break a, uh, what do you call a mythos. We have to, I, and, and I, know, I know, I'm sorry that I'm now talking five minutes. So I not talk philosoph <laughs> philosophically. <coughs> but I, I'll, I'll able to, to finish with it. Discussion of the well, I'll, I'll, I'll go through it. So this is regarding bone. The second factor that I want to talk about is the soil water quality, which is even more fascinating. Water, soil water quality in the soil. The assumption is that in this case, nothing is leachable. I mean, not, nothing is leached below the 20 centimeters layer. There is no interaction with the soil whatsoever. <coughs> Everything is extracted and referring only four elements which the Israeli Minister of uh, Health is concerned about it. Is the arsenic, cadmium, uh, plumbum, and uh, mercury. This is what they, they, they want. The other one it doesn't, it doesn't exist even for them. Only those four. So and this is the table, the second table, the important table that I want to show. And there are, there are only two tables in the, in the lecture. Again, those are the four elements. And this is for the, was calculated for the two soils, clay soil and loess soil, uh, based on the uh, uh, field capacity, water content of field capacity. In the last term, I want uh, column. I want uh, to, to refer the quality. The actually the standard for drinking water in Israel, <coughs> within the unit of a microgram per liter. Fifty, five, ten, and one. One is mercury. Let's concentrate on the clay soil. Well, everything, all those elements are actually in, are, are in the uh, soil solution 
available for planes. The concentration under this uh, uh, water content is three for arsenic is 3.7 ppm. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, micro uh, ppb, which is about 13 <coughs> times lower than drinking water. You have to just just to think about it. 13 times below drinking water. Every, everybody is shouting and saying, shut down this uh, project. Is, 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 uh, actually uh, uh, contaminated the Israeli soil, the groundwater. And I didn't show any, I made all the calculations for groundwater is in, in Israel as well. Over there is even much safer than, than soil. So what it's, what it's indicating actually that I can implement or, or add certain con, con, uh, constituent here into the soil in the soil and not even reach the limit of high quality drinking water. I didn't see any anybody in Israel that saying that don't drink don't irrigate your field with drinking water quality. <coughs> so this is number one. <coughs> if you move into cadmium then you can elevate it to 18 consecutive yields without reaching, without reaching the, uh, the water quality. For, for a polymer is 34 years, and for mercury is 100 years. I don't understand that somebody even worry about it. For the last soil, because of the, and remember, that the assumption is there is no absorption, no precipitation whatsoever in the soil, in the soil itself. <coughs> Everything available for the plants, the uptake for the plants. For the light soil, of course, because the water content is lower than for clay soil, then the number of years is reducing, but again, uh, this is in, in the range of of error is 100 years, whatever, what, whatsoever. So this is the two tables that I wanted to show you that to break down some paradigmas that are anchored in Israel before understanding what we deal with. And because you know that if you, there is a radiation and you say uh, radiation is, is very dangerous and you are to cancel it and then and, and et cetera, et cetera. And the reason for that is because people, if they don't know anything about it, they, I don't, I, and, and I'm not, I, I think it maybe sometimes is right. If you don't know anything about it, they, you, are, you are prefer precaution rather than anything else. But if you know, why to stick into this, those the uh, wrong concepts? So uh, this is this is what I wanted to to tell you about in two slides, uh, what it's all about. Secondly, remember, and I don't go, I will not go through it. I can discuss about it later. Flash is a material that change not with time, but it change with the conditions under which flyers is uh, interact with. So if one is uh, in the field rating with, uh, in the atmosphere, moisture as well as of CO2, there is a severe important change that takes place in the structure of flyers, affecting dramatically the leachability of different elements. So if one is carrying, and, and this is the important uh, comment, all of those data where I took it from fresh, 
fresh uh, fly ash that was just came out from the chimneys, which is, are not affecting at all by the uh, atmosphere. So this is the maximum eligibility that can be achieved. But once you take it in the, in the field, one second, once you take it into the field and interacting with water, especially in soil, and remember <coughs> that the partial pressure of CO2 in soil is 10 times greater than the partial pressure of CO2 in the atmosphere. So the carbonation process that takes place in soil is enhanced significantly compared to the atmosphere. And what takes uh, about in atmosphere maybe three months, in the soil it may take a week. And it will affect dramatically the amount of uh, all those elements releasing into the soil. So to make a long story short, I may put my stocks into that in order to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, co to be confident that in a, at least of those terms of, uh, terms of time, I don't think there will be any problem in using fly ash and uh, enviro in the field of uh, agriculture. Thank you very much. questions because we're running a few minutes behind, but there'll be plenty of time for discussion after our next speaker. So if I ask everyone to hold your uh, questions until after our next speaker, that way we'll remain on schedule. And actually, if one, one, I can just say uh, to give a, a brief review how, uh, how much, what is the effectiveness of, uh, of different conditions on the uh, availability of those elements in fly ash. So if one's more interested in it, it's available here. Thank you, Rami. All right. Our next